All right, guys. Uh, sorry, just a little bit late. Matt had to get a shower. And, uh, I kind of did too. I had coaching football, but uh, we're live. My good friend Matt Robertson, y'all know him, has on him. So welcome in. Uh, welcome to channel member Dennis Carrier. Thank you, uh, Dennis, for joining. So Matt, what's up, my man? I love the color shirt. Not much, dude. Uh, got off Kentucky Lake, went for a run, and uh, yeah, I smashed some Mexican and. I was all hot and sweaty, and I want to come and hang out with the bike, man, but I need to freshen up a little bit, you know what I mean? I appreciate it. Uh, usually, Matt's over at my house, but uh, there's no way. Like, this place is a wreck. Um, he, we couldn't get him in here. So, I'm working to eventually, Matt, get it to where uh, I can have a chair on both sides and have two webcams, so when you or another guest wants to come to the bait room, uh, you know, we can do it Joe Rogan style both ways. Oh, yeah, I've been in the bait room before, so I, I know the if you have anything more than what was in there, then I know I know there's a problem because we it's were bumping those, almost sitting in each other's lap and shit. Yeah, it's uh, way worse now. Uh, speaking of baits, you know, I did get to come visit you a few weeks ago, and we went fishing. I come to your new place and new barn, and it's a bait barn. I didn't say too much, but uh, yeah, give me about an hour to look around in there. Yeah, you can find some stuff in there. I know that. I know that. Some good stuff. Yeah, so, guys, give a shout-out to everybody that's joining the stream. Go ahead, fill us in. Uh, how was Kentucky Lake today? It's just straight up, no BS, tough, suck. Did you figure them out? Well, if you want to know the truth about today, and this is no joke, I didn't catch a keeper on Kentucky Lake. And about... Two or three o'clock, I hung it up and went to Barkley and caught two keepers. So, yeah. so yeah, that's uh, that's the shape Kentucky likes it. And dude, I swear to God, I felt like I was fishing in a lake that had no bass in it. I know it's a really weird feeling, like, uh, like dude, I'm telling you, I caught some yesterday, but I only caught like five. But I caught five yesterday, and I'm just like, God, it's so, it's so. It sucks so bad. Yeah, sometimes, you know, I film all these shows for Mark, and we're going to try Kentucky Lake in the morning, and I'm going to go in it with that half, the glass is half full. Yeah, we can get us five, make a TV show, but then again, I'm kind of like, man, I might be wasting my time. We'll see. I mean, mm. there's a lot of things going on. Tell Mark to go to Bashir's. Stop messing around. Dude, like it, I, it's <laughs> minutes further down the road. And you guaranteed to make a show. Dude, uh, so my heart, I told you in text, my hard drive crashed today editing our little Berkeley thing. I don't know what yeah. happened, but I panicked because I have all my you know stuff of Mark and everything. Yeah. And I, I back up all his stuff, but I was like, I just, you know, no big deal. Put Matt's on here. My, a bunch of my stuff I haven't edited for YouTube. Nick Crash. I'm like, oh, shit. So I got it all saved, but my project I was working on is gone, but... I've already laid it out once. I'll have it done this weekend. But me and Matt went to a lake uh, a few weeks ago. It's called Lake Bashir's Public Lake. It's got good ones in it. It's got a healthy population. And when you, I'll, I got a video to edit with Matt. Spinner bait, catfish rod, dude. It's the damnedest thing, dude. Smoking them with a glide bait on a catfish rod. Yeah. And uh, but you can tell the difference. Like if I go film Mark tomorrow or was with you. Just by the way the shad are acting, like we got to our yep. first spot on Bashir's, man. It was like old Kentucky, like, you know, the shad pods are up there. You see oh, yeah. bass busting. You go to Kentucky Lake, sucker's like dead. Oh, no, dude. Like, uh, man, that, the problem is, is that, you know, me and Kevin Muner were talking today. So you go out there fishing and you go out there and you just keep on fishing the same places you used to catch them and trying, the, trying that stuff trying new places and and did you just keep on thinking like oh yeah i'm fixing it i'm fixing it it's fixing to happen and it's just not gonna happen like, hey, here's here's a good question for you matt you know we're gonna be all over the place maybe yeah, not yeah. as not as maybe not as much as pat matter of fact yeah. i'm not gonna lie i sent pat an invite he might he might jump in here or not i've never had pat on i think i'm gonna be sneaky i'm gonna see if pat will join us and we can get really wild but uh Thomas Hines says, "Bros, I'm late. When are we going to getting getting some more autumn ten cup hats?" 
Buddy, I think I got some. I'll have to look, but I'll have to double check that. Dude, those autumn hats. Oh, I, you gave me an orange and white one. I cannot find it. Like I got a whole box of orange and white ones, I know. But you could, those would be going hot since we beat Alabama right now. Because uh, Tennessee is on them. But uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to roll through some questions and real quick. And then uh, I, a lot of people saying, what's up on them? All that good okay. stuff. Uh, thanks to all the channel members in here. Um, let's talk about this, uh, Matt. What about what's your go-to for fall fishing? You go to a new lake. Are you a topwater guy? I know you're a spinnerbait guy. A lot of people don't understand. Matt's a yeah. really good spinnerbait fisherman. Um, how, what's your approach to a new lake in the fall? Um, top, just about anywhere you go in the country, you're gonna have to pull out a topwater in the fall. Top water, spinner bait, glide bait, and I mean that's usually what I'd roll with just to you know go bang it out, you know, starting out. Right. Yeah, and that's kind of your strengths. Like we joke, and you're like, I ain't pulling out no damn drop shot. Yeah, yeah. And really, drop shot's not a good way to find them. It's kind of no, it's you, not. You, you got to like, find them too pull out the sissy stick yeah now I, I have seen photos of you this year with spinning rods no oh, yeah i can I, I can operate those things just fine you know what i mean but just, uh it's whenever we go to a venue where i have to you know but but yeah man i for sure in the fall and fish are pushing up shallow most places with the exception of a few lakes in the country and and yeah, you know, I like to power fish. So yeah, that's how we're rolling. Here we go. Here's a good spinnerbait question right here. This is from Hunter Nixon with a $5 donation. Ask this question. Thank you so much, Hunter Nixon. Uh, Matt, how do you decide on a spinnerbait to throw? What uh, what blade config configuration in what situation? There you go. So I basically got um, three blade combinations that I throw. And, and they're pretty simple. I throw a, uh, I got two double willows that I, this is, this is for like right now, fall fishing, summertime. Um, and, but I basically throw a double Colorado with, um, or not double Colorado, but a double willow leaf. Um, one little like uh, four and a half silver. And then a, uh, you know, Sometimes I'll run another four and a half for, for your end blade, but a lot of times I'll run like a five uh, gold. And then I'll run a, also run another spinner bait with a double silver. And those are both my white spinner baits. And then, um, and then for some reason, this is just what I do. Like I can't tell you if it's good or bad or one indifferent or whatnot, but on my white and chartreuse one, I run a uh, uh, tandem spinner bait with a little uh silver colorado with a big number five willow leaf dude i got my ass kicked by that combo like bad yeah so i, I want to <laughs> yeah so one thing uh i learned with matt and i love fishing spinnerbaits one of my favorite ways but he was kicking my butt good and i never listened to him but matt didn't run a trailer like it was so matt was throwing the berkeley the new berkeley power blade and I'm not sponsored by Berkeley, but I'll tell y'all right now, and you'll see it on my YouTube video. You'll see it in the promo video. It's a bad son bitch. It yep. catches them. So it's got a long hook hook on it. Uh, it's weighted mm -hmm. in the middle, so it, uh, it falls really nice. It's streamlined. It's got really good components. Okay, we got that. But one thing, Matt, he didn't run a trailer. And so he's fishing it on the bottom. T tell us why you don't run a trailer when you're fishing deep spinnerbait like that. Because uh, I want the spinnerbait to move faster. Like a lot of times, uh, you know, your trailer's going to slow your spinnerbait down. But I don't want these fish to have a whole lot of time to look at it. So I want I want them to react to it, you know, kind of ambush it a little more. And uh, also, man, I never run a trailer hook. Like that's two things I never... The only time I run a trailer is uh in like 50 degree in cold water whenever you're throwing a big colorado blade that's the only time but other than that never run uh never run a trailer or a trailer hook 
And I, if you look at the new Barclay spinner bait, man, it's got a pretty beefy hook in it. And uh, the new power blade, it, come, it comes back a little further, like where you don't need, it makes up for that trailer hook. It's it's pretty impressive little spinner bait. Yeah, uh, let's see if I can pull it up on Tackle Warehouse real quick. Uh, I thought I had it up here. Let's see. Uh, uh, yeah. All right, I'm going to pull it up on Tackle Warehouse here. And so, Berkeley's got, golly, look at all these combinations. Now, I just searched Berkeley Blade, uh, if you can't tell. I've Click on done... that on the bottom left. Bottom left, the Power Blade, the compact one? Yeah, that's the one I was throwing the other day. Yeah, this one right here. Yep. And I think you are which one were you throwing? You were throwing the, it was a whitish one? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. That's a good looking some bitch there, Matt. You're uh, gonna have to hook me up with the purple rain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're bad, dude. Yeah. So they're, this is basically what Matt was throwing right here. Uh, was it a three quarter ounce white? Uh, yeah, three quarter ounce. Yeah, that guy right there. So if you guys look behind the head, there's that cylinder, and it's got those two cone keepers. So if you do run a trailer, it's gonna stick up there. Uh, yeah. But one thing I like is that hook and the blade, the back blade are almost perfectly in line. So, you know, when that fish comes, if he's trying to hit the blade, he's going to get the hook. It's yeah. got really, really good design. I linked those, by the way, uh, in the description of the video. But, man, they got a bunch of really good colors. Got all your whites covered. Got to look at this. You know, I'm going to have to have yeah. you some a bad color right there that purple isn't quite as strong as it shows right there but it's like it's like the perfect perfect hint man i'm telling you it's bad yeah and i'm gonna charge berkeley about half a dozen of those for cutting some videos uh i think that'd be good i like that this they didn't skimp on spring colors you got a solid chartreuse yeah. one you got coleslaw over here um uh, and that's the compact version and they've got a look at here I didn't realize. Yep. Not blades. Black and purple. Go on those this coming summer, there ain't no doubt. Dude, I got to figure out how we can film a night show. It would be I got amazing. It. I, I got it. I, you got, I got it? it. There, no, there's a camera out there, and I've talked to the people, and it films at night like it's during the day. Like, the it, at, it's dark, but it pulls in all the little hints of light, and it and it throws together like it's daylight, no lights or nothing. Dude, that's awesome. We, we, we got to try it. <laughs> We're going to do it. it. Uh, let, me, let me get this uh, stop screen. There we go. That was cool. I've actually never used that before with this program. I always have to do it a different way. All right, let's answer a couple questions here. We can get back into spinner baits, I'm sure. Uh, here's a good question. Uh, I got, actually got a text message. I don't know why they want to... Uh... This is from... Uh... It says, ask Matt, if you were to fight in a tag team match with somebody on the Elite Series, who's your teammate and who would they fight? Um, like, I ought to take, I ought to take Caleb just because he's so daggone big. But I got to tell you, I'd probably have to take Corey just because he's – He's my boy, and I know he's got my back. Like right. He'd go battle with me against anybody. And, uh, God, I would love to see him just get a hold of Lee Livesey. <laughs> so, I'll be honest with you. I got, listen, whenever Caleb threw me in the water, Lee helped me get out one time. And I about shit myself at how strong that boy is. He, tried to, he pulled me out of the water easier, easier than Caleb did. Yeah, so like the first time I ever met Lee, we you know we done a podcast. We all, we sent a lot of message on Instagram. He, he's a good dude. I really like Lee. Yeah, yeah. And so first time I met him at the classic, he shook my hand. I was like, "Gosh, damn, dude!" Like, like you could tell that dude's a guy that he would he's go chop wood for fun. Yeah. Uh, I would personally. I would unless y'all have a Mexican luchador circuit on. Uh, for wrestling i'm probably out on that i guess that menendez could be my partner then uh no, no. <laughs> all right here's a question i'll try to get as many as i can 
Uh, fish in the southeast. What type of tails do you like on your glide bait? Do you prefer a brush tail, a soft urethane tail, or super hard tail? That's a good question. I don't think I've ever got that one before. No, no, I actually like uh, more of a urethane tail, you know, than, than a brush tail. The uh, I think the brush tails are uh, are garbage. Uh, they tear up if you don't keep, you don't store them exactly perfect. Yep. Then they uh, now they get distorted, and once they do get distorted, their damn sure ain't no getting it back from what I've seen. Um, but yeah, I hate the brush tails. I like the soft urethane tail. You know, I've thrown, you know, the the uh savage gears and some s waivers and stuff and and i don't mind the hard tail um you know but the urethane tail that, that you know that being said it's a little urethane tail and the hard tail are about the same thing so right like i do like the fact that like a urethane tail even if you bend it it's easy to get it back straight up if a hard tail really bends it's bent uh yeah. you know the the bait I was throwing with you, the, the paperweight, yeah. I like the bait, but the six inch version I've got, I've been catching a lot on around here. It's like almost destroyed, you know? And listen, yeah. The fresh tails just ain't durable. They look great in the water. They're very natural, but you start catching a bunch of fish on them. Uh, you got to replace them. And from what I was told, a lot of them are like paint brushes, but be a uh, beer responsible like me and just throw them down somewhere and let the, off flare to the side and see how it works it don't <clears throat> here's a question I, I feel like this guy might be joking uh carrie selby says hello friends i'm new to fishing what would you throw in the fall for some small mouth on kentucky barkley a ned rig <laughs> yeah <laughs> a ned rig yeah, uh actually i know carrie and i would throw uh the blue thunder a little four inch or six inch black worm with the blue tail that would definitely catch him uh, no doubt carrie's a good dude very good dude uh i know Harry, he'll th i know he throws a ned rig that's why i said that <laughs> you know i keep buying ned rig stuff and then i go to go fishing and i just leave it at home like uh, i'm afraid someone will see me out there like just standing there with a the pole I, uh here's daryl wilson says all right, what do I need to do at Dale Hollow? I'm down here in the Renegade Championship with old Sherbert. Hmm. Well, man, I know it's cooling off a bunch, and if I was down there, dude, honestly, as bad as I hate to say it, usually this time of year the Alabama rig's going to play on uh, on Dale Hollow, especially with this cool snap, you know, cooling that water off. You know what I always say about Dale Hollow? You just throw a jig. Uh I've only been there a few times, but off you're off not jerk baits. Uh, a rig works, but it always comes down to throwing a jig for me. Uh, let's see, I'm way behind on questions, so I'm trying to. Uh, oh, you're good. Here's one from Bush Rat. When does Loudon go off limits, and how much time do you have you spent graphing it? Um, it goes off limits whenever you qualify for it, so it's off limits, and uh. I have spent no time graphing it, and I don't know if I will. Yeah. Like, if if it was a little earlier in the year, like whenever Gussie won, but it's about three weeks later, maybe a month, or maybe, I can't remember whenever we was there last time, but I think it's two or three weeks. I think it's three weeks later. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little warmer. I think the fish are going to be pushing up. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I do need to go graph out there, but uh, but I don't plan on it. So, uh, I've been on the water, so I can't say anything, but I can ask you a question. Uh, right. Do you see any benefit to not practicing uh, for the Classic? Do you feel like, because it's that time of year and you have a lot of experience on the Tennessee River chain, you've been there before, do you feel like practicing a month or two early whenever you got that little practice window do you do you feel like yeah. it's kind of a waste of time since you've been there before yeah so i've practiced for three classics and it did me absolutely no good in any of them so i'm not doing that again let's just put it that way and the only thing I could see beneficial is if somebody did go out there, maybe find some deep winter in smallmouth, and they did stay 
I highly doubt they would by, you know, pretty much April, the end of March. But that's the only thing I could see playing. Yeah, I know. Other than that, I asked you on the water, I was like, when are you leaving for practice? And you, you kind of like, man, I really don't think I'm going to, you know? Um, yeah. All right, here you go. Dax Marshall, he's a channel member. Thank you, Dax, for your contribu contribution. Uh, he wants to know, what's your go-to spinnerbait setup? Rod, reel, and line. Uh, man, I throw a uh, seven foot medium heavy with, uh, you know, 17 or 20 pound test. And I got to be honest with you, I throw it on fluorocarbon and uh, just like my swim baits. And uh, I throw all my swim baits on fluorocarbon and, and spinner baits pretty much. If you think about it, if you're a good swim bait fisherman, you can be a good uh, spinner bait fisherman because it's more or less about the retrieve and whatnot. But, uh, I throw it on a, uh, I'll be honest with you, a Abba Garcia Revo. It's a 7 3 to 1 gear ratio. But that being said, I've been trying out uh, the new Xenon. And let me tell you something, it's an 8 gear ratio reel. Mm -hmm. And that thing may be the smoothest, farthest casting thing I've ever grabbed a hold of yeah dude so like uh you're you're an og abu guy like i've known you for a long time and matt's always ran abu stuff like when he was just fishing local stuff and, and so i think it's a really good pairing with you because you're using stuff you like so yeah it's different than you know let's say i pair with lose i'm gonna be honest with you i like lose okay but it's I, it would take me a learning curve to really feel good about promoting it. Whereas you, you know Abu, dude. I've seen the old winches, dude. Those yep. old Abu winches are badass yep, for cranking. Bill, man, some Gen One Revos, and uh, I wish they'd just start making them again. You know, dude, it, it'd be amazing. Um, but Robot. one thing I noticed fishing with Matt, and I fished a couple times, honestly. You keep it really simple. You don't have like crazy rod and reel combinations. All yeah. I lose you, Kev. Dude. I got I don't know what happened. Dude, freaking Russians. That are the Alabama fans out there seeing all this orange. And... I could be. All right, here we, here we go. Uh, what I was saying is, Matt, you keep it pretty simple. And oh. I feel there's something to just keeping it simple. A lot of guys, gearheads out there, they've got to have this specialized rod, specialized reel and line for every technique. And you're just out here like, man, all I got is like seven foot, medium heavy, seven three heavies, and a catfish yeah. rod. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I keep it really, really simple. Like, I just, you know, I know I, I watched Five and Chris before using all these different, you know, different rod and reels. Good, Kev? Dude, Good? is that me or you? Or I don't. Both? I don't know if it's uh, it says Streamyard says I'm fairly good now. I guess it's going in and out. I've got five. My five G is going good. Junior's doing homework, so he's not on Xbox. All right, let's get some other questions. Maybe it's because I'm trying to ask questions. This uh, what happens. Uh, here's a good one. How much? Oh, uh, this is from Critical Gravy. Uh, he's a channel member. Thank you, Gravy. How much have you changed your game plan due to forward-facing technologies? Uh, basically, just depends on where we're going. Like, uh, 
Not really that much because it kind of, the forward facing sonar kind of falls into my strengths on how I like to fish with the offshore fishing. Um, I'll tell you what I've kind of done, and I guess I don't think it's probably the right thing to do, but I've kind of stopped relying on my forward facing sonar quite as much. I'll use it to, you know, to hit targets like brush piles, stumps, mm -hmm. rock piles, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, except for whenever it comes up north, of course, on like the smallmouth fisheries, but like, like Hartwell here and whatnot, uh, you know, I just kind of, it falls into the game plan, but like you're not self-dependent on it is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No now, doubt. We're we're from Kentucky. We don't have a giant dictionary in front of us all the time. Yeah. Uh, but I get what you're saying. Uh, you just use I, it as as a tool. Yep. I ask the people if they can hear you. My buddy Dennis said they can't. He, he can't hear you, but they can hear me. Uh oh. I ask them. I can hear you. Can y'all hear me? Hit me up in that chat. I didn't mute myself. No, I can hear you. I know you didn't mute yep, yourself. I got, I got a bunch of people. We got almost 200 people in here pretty wild. Right. Uh, whew, I had some good questions. Everyone says they can hear me now. I don't... Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. It's Bateman on them isn't freezing. Okay, that's great. Uh, yeah, like 500 people said y'all are good. All right. Here's a really cool question. Uh... For those who know, how good is the Japanese Berkeley stuff? Do you have any of the Japanese Berkeley products? I have a few of them, and uh, yeah, they're good, man. But I'll be honest with you, it's kind of there's a few new things Berkeley's working on, and and it's totally different than anything I've ever seen. And but other than those few things, dude, like it to me. Like, no offense, I don't mean that, but I just think some of the Japanese stuff's overrated. The only thing I will say about the Japanese that I really do like, and I would spend way too much money doing it, is those guys trick their reels out, like... Oh, yeah, it's like MTV's Pimp My Ride. Yeah, it's like Pimp My Ride on a fishing reel, and I look at their reels, and I'm like, damn, I want one of those. <laughs> yeah. Where did all that bling for my reel, you know? Yeah, I'm surprised their reels don't have a fold-out 4-inch LCD screen that shows their live scope. No, I may have just gave them a hell of an idea right there. but no, no. Uh, Here's a good question from Katrina uh, Pritchett. What's your best and worst place to fish? Uh, the best place to fish? Man, I'm going to tell you, I'd ha probably have to go with Champlain, but like Lake Fork has a special place in my heart. Like I really like fishing for those great big bass and uh the worst lake uh probably old hickory lake in in tennessee it's even though know, you have a lake you have a lake record there yeah yeah lake record spotted bass and i'm still saying that that might be the worst lake i've ever fished i've been three times and literally i i don't think i've got five fish there yeah but, i haven't like it's bad there's just something about it that it all kind of looks the same. It makes me feel like it makes me like I get on there and I just don't even want to fish. Uh, like Kentucky Lake starting to make me feel that way though, right now. Yeah, uh, it. You know, it's really weird though. It should. It did fish pretty decent from January to like April this year. Yeah, but I just I'm not Otter. as smart as you. I can't figure them out after that. They ought to be biting right now. They should, but man, our weather's crazy. So we've had all these cool nights, then some cool days. Now it's going to get back up in the 80s. It worries me because you know what happened last year? We had all this warm weather and then we had this freaking tornadoes. So, yeah. All right. Got a lot of questions here. Uh, Mark Williams wants to know uh, I saw this. I'll put it up on the screen here. He wants to know what's your favorite restaurant in the Katawa area? Uh, I gotta tell you, the my little Mexican place down there, Eddieville. I mean, it's pretty good. That place like, is really freaking good. 
Yeah, La, Los, Los Agaves, I think it is. Um, there's this, uh, God, I can't remember. There's a cheeseburger place over in Grand Rivers, but I can't remember the name of it. It's at the Y, like, go the opposite way of Patty's. Yeah, oh, God, like, I forgot the name of it. Uh, yeah. There's, like, Patty's and Craig's and something else. Uh, yeah. A little hole in the wall. All right, here's one from Terry Doss. He said, ask Matt, have you ever had a small mouth jump in the boat? Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, me and him were night fishing one night. That's my cousin Terry. We were yeah. night fishing whenever I was young, still, probably still in high school. And we're over on Golly, the east. Golly, son of a bitch. Did my connection drew. Good, Kev. Good, Kev? I'm yeah, I'm good. I don't, cool. just kicked us out. Let me go make sure Junior uh, isn't playing games. He may be freaking Call of Duty and everything, so I may have to go lay it down. Uh, right. here, I'll tell the story. You got, I'll tell the story about the smallmouth jumping in the boat. Yeah. Hurry up. Yeah, so, uh, so me and my cousin Terry were down here night fishing on the LBL side of Kentucky Lake, and... Uh, and the bugs were bad and i was whining about the bugs and whatnot and there's an old chunk rock bank and i threw a jig up there and and we go up there got hung up goes up there you know sticks the rod down in the water you know gets a jig out and all of a sudden something jumps in the boat just and i scream like a little girl i'm talking about at the top of my lungs and uh and I was like, what is it? What is it? And he's like, calm down, calm down. And uh, he grabbed the flashlight, shined it down there. And it was a great big smallmouth. And I jumped down there. I was like, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. It was like a four and three quarter pound smallmouth jumped in the boat that night. That's awesome. Uh, I yeah. just unplugged an Xbox. So hopefully you... this works. Man, uh, and maybe it's my fault because... I kind of knew better. I was like, man, Matt, get on here. We'll have a lot of viewers. But, you know, back in the day, you know, I'd have seven, 800 people in here, but we're rolling 200 deep up tonight. Uh, let's see here. I had some good questions now, miss. Uh, here's a go. Here's one from John Hudson. Matt, do you ever throw a real jigging pig? Do you ever use, like, pork on there? Man, like, I still, I have a bunch of pork stashed away. Like, a bunch. And, uh, man, I got to tell you, actually, I caught fish on a jig with pork on it about a month ago. I'm not going to say where or when because I don't want him to get mad at me. But, yeah, I was banging them on some pork here about a month ago. I know uh, our good buddy Jason Kidd, he, 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 he'll he text me randomly throughout the year. Man, have you come across any pork? So oh, there's yeah. something about you, Muhlenberg, all, uh, Union County guys, all that, you Guys that fish those lakes, y'all really like that stuff. Uh, all right. If I missed your question, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get the channel members' questions first and everything, uh, since they uh, pay me a little jingle every month. Uh, let's see here. I'm go back before we. And if I miss it as well, uh, here you go, Chris Flay. Ugly stick does the trick. What's your favorite ugly stick model? Dude, the seven foot medium heavy. I can pretty much do it all with that. And uh, we got a few different sizes going to come out next year, supposed to have. 
Uh, supposed to have a 7.6 and a 7.3 coming out, so pretty excited about that. But, man, if you can find them, they're hard to find, but they make a 7.8. And even I try to find them and can't find them. But uh, it, it's a good rod, but they're just – honestly, you would not believe – how underrated a seven foot medium heavy is it's my favorite ride like you yeah. do so much with that um, yeah I, like when people would you know my retail days would come in and say hey i'm looking for a rod you know i just want something all around seven foot yeah. medium heavy you can throw a worm throw a jig throw a spinner bait throw a crankbait top water you name it uh let's see all right this is an interesting uh comment here well yeah this is from andy leonard it says russ snyder in the kayak bass fishing championship fish yesterday and today on kentucky lake his top five fish total 190 inches in length okay so that's almost a 35 inch per fish uh, what... uh two days five fish okay so that's a hundred in almost 100 inches so that's a 20 inch yeah, fish a day five inches a day i mean you're talking that's a pretty good stringer you're talking 20 pounds so i'm gonna tell you what i'm gonna guess and i could be i could be totally off on this so the difference between those kayakers and bass fishermen or um, well they are bass fishermen but guys in a bass boat versus is, plastic let me, boats let me tell you something there are places on kentucky lake that you can access with a kayak especially in this low water where you can't get a bass boat you cannot get a bass boat you can't even remote like i'm talking about going up the stream a couple miles right and there's some deep holes and most of like they're all on the south end of the lake and if i was guessing that's what i would guess i could be totally wrong like he may have found a place out on the lake but i highly doubt that i got I'd throw a hundred dollar bill on it right now. Wherever those fish were caught, you cannot get a bass boat through right now. Yeah, you could get really back far into the Duck River and get on some yeah. big giant smallmouth. And when the water yeah, drops you, real low, there's a couple other rivers up there you can go up. You yeah. know, I and think it's, of, yeah, technically for a kayak, the water touches it. So yeah, and I think you can drag your kayak if like the water's really low and you're going like the back of let's just say smith okay yeah there's a big ass creek in the back of smith yeah but you got to get past that flat well you could drag your kayak across as long as that water is truly connected to the lake i think it's legal oh yeah um, they're allowed to put in back there yeah so, i'll tell you the only other place that that might play for that kind of weight is right below pickwick dam yeah because I know they've been, I know they catch those small mice down there, and that'd be the only other place that I could think. It's either non-accessible by a bass boat or below Pickwick Dam catching that kind of weight. I would say you're right on the non-accessible um, with bass boat. At first, I thought that said 190 inches in one day, and I'm like, dude, that guy's been. <laughs> I was like, man, I hate to call somebody out, but they've been up at Lake X or something like that. That ain't. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, let's see here. I had a good question from Cameron Porter. He wanted to know, do you use the 6-inch or 8-inch S-Waver? Uh, it's a 6-and-3-quarter uh, six and three quarter inch. So that's the, what, 168? Yeah, the 168. Yeah, but I thought one, too. It's a good one, you know. It just kind of depends on on where and the, and... Do you want to try to catch great big ones, or do you want to get bit more? You know, that's what it boils down to. Here's a really good question, and I don't know if I've ever asked you this. Matt, who was your mentor that got you into the sport? Uh, my granddad, my cousin Terry, you know. Um, just the, the older guys I grew up fishing with, Wendell's dad. And, uh, yeah, that's it, yeah. dude. It was I, I, a... I can't wait to go on a fishing trip with you and Wendell. It may not make YouTube, but I can't wait. That dude is wild. Yep. Guaranteed to be an argument and a fight on the water. <laughs> I just won't talk. We'll try <laughs> that man help me out. And and you'll never you'll never hear anybody call me stupid so much in your life as him. 
Wendell's a good dude. I like him. Uh, let's see. I, I've got this question a lot. Uh, autumn hats. Uh, where can guys get autumn hats right now? Do you, do you have an autumn hat website or what's the deal? Yeah, autumnfishing.com. So they're in stock. All right, I'm going to put put yep. it in here, and I'll put it in the description of the video as well. Um, let's see. I'm just going to let, let the uh, the YouTube guys ask all the questions. That makes my life easy. Um, got that, got that. And some guys later in the stream will ask the same ones as well. Uh, all right. Matt Robertson, how would you target shallow, sluggish fish? I've been successful with lipless crankbait, but spend more time clearing debris off the bait. So, if you're going to fish shallow, it's this time of year. It's tough. How are you going to How are you going to approach that? Man, this time of year, shallow, sluggish. Um, they'd honestly, I'd probably pick up a spinner bait, and uh, I don't know, like. Like, how sluggish are they? Like, is it a deal where they're pressured and you got to throw a wacky rig or something like that? But, um, honestly, one of the best things I've seen for sluggish fish, sluggish fish is a Nico rig. Like, no. if you really, really want to try to catch a, a true sluggish fish, a Nico rig. What bait do you like on a Nico rig? Do you like something slim profile, like a just like a plano trick worm? Or a lot yeah. of guys like a, a general or Cinco style yeah. bait? Carl Senko, um, any type of, you know, four or five inch, probably a five inch worm and just jam. What I don't, a lot of people are picky about the size weight. Seth is picking out the different size Nico weights and I'm just ramming whatever I fin it. But, uh, yeah, any, any of them. Here's, here's a question. Uh, I think I know the answer, but I'll let you, where did Matt come up with the on them phrase? Cause it's dude, the most uh, story. <laughs> Is it PG? Uh, no. So we, I don't think we need to tell it here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> that's all right. But you know what, dude? That's like the it phrase. You know, you've made it big when someone sends you a screenshot from a Georgia football game and they're celebrating a touchdown and the kids on TV in a red and white on them hat. Yeah, that's dude. I CBS primetime. Text messages over that. Dude, I, I'm telling you, uh, if I had, if I was at a Tennessee game, that's what I would rock. Uh, here's a great question here. Clay uh, wants to know, what's your favorite glide bait to use right now? I'd have to go with the tater hog. So what is it about the tater hog? Like, I've seen it in action. You guys will see it probably next week when I get this thing done, but... What is it about that bait over versus things I've thrown or other guys are using... Not that other stuff is bad, but is there something about the tater hat hog that gives you a little bit more confidence, or is it the way you can actually fish so, it? Dude, I think it's, I don't know, it's something special about that bait. Like, I, I can get it deeper than other glide baits, like where me and Kev were fishing. I'm getting it down 8, 9. I, if, I, if I have to, I can really get it down to 10 foot, but, like, I got to make it do that. Yeah, it's even sometimes it's a struggle to get it down eight foot, but like, like dude, that that thing, it, it like it. Usually, I don't like a super realistic bait, but uh, but the paint jobs are solid on it, and uh, it's something about it doesn't have that. Like a lot of people want the biggest, widest s s glide. Mm -hmm. I, I used to didn't like the shad glides. I used to like you know the longer trout glides. But, but dude, I don't, I, I really, I can't tell you. All I know is the fish bite the damn thing. I mean, at the end of the day, they bite it. You know, there's baits like that. Like, I can't tell you why. I just know I'll catch them on it. Uh, one thing I like about the hog farm, I like those big eyes on it. For some reason, that's got if, big eyes. if you got a glide that's got big eyes, I don't know if the fish kind of see that. And maybe they key on that, kind of like you know, the old school jerkbait guys always draw the black spot on there. If they see those eyes and and, and key on that as well, um, but I dude, think I, it's perfect size. It's like not too big, but just like you saying, I caught two pounders on it. Like yeah, it's it's like 
it's not that oversized where they won't bite it and but it's not that undersized where it doesn't get their attention austin stutz from acs marine says you're one of the guys that got him into big swim baits i love seeing you on the show he said tell him hello from all the guys at acs austin's a great dude i like him yeah uh, here's a great question Josh, from Josh Herting. Matt, what's been the hardest thing for you to learn as you've made the step up to the elites? Um, honestly, uh, the hardest thing I learned wasn't really a step up to the elites. It was from my first year of the Opens to my second year of the Opens. Um, like I took that Kentucky Lake style, the big swim baits and all that, and the first year on the Opens, I went like i went and tried to swing too hard at them and and i tried to throw swim you know i like swim baiting it has its time and place mm -hmm. but but like i really and even from whenever i won down at the harris chain like you just saw one of those times whenever i swung and you know i actually hit the shit out of it yeah and, you did and dude it's just uh i just I had to make an adjustment from trying to win every damn tournament to, you know, concentrating on catching fish. Like, I just had to go back to regular baits, like, you know, like bladed jigs and whatnot versus, you know, having 10 swim baits laying on the deck. All right, we got a special guest that's joined in here. Uh, I did, I spilt it to Matt earlier, but, uh, Never has this guy been on the stream, and I was on his uh, channel one time, so I owed it to this man right here. We got Pat Renwick from Stray Cass in the house. So if I'm going to have Matt, we got to have Odin's son. What's up, Pat? How you doing? Hey, we're great, man. Thank you so much for joining us. I love the hair. It looks amazing. It, thanks. I feel amazing tonight. And I even have a fancy little stand here that I'm going to put this phone on and, uh, and watch this. This should even be better. How's that? That looks... I love the pillow in the back. What do I got? Oh, yeah. This is Big Mouth Bat pillow right here. See this? And then I... Bed, Matt. Hey, Matt. You're sitting on my bed. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am sitting on your bed. And I got a Bassin dog with me right here, too. See this? This is Shane. It's the Bassin dog. Oh, man. Yeah, that's my parents' dog. They're in Jamaica, so I'm dog sitting. Wait. Going bet, on, you guys dude. We're just we're chatting bass and we're taking proper bass and questions tonight. Oh, nice! I like it. I like it, Kev. Thanks for having me on the Baxter the Bateman channel. I, yeah, I, dude, you're welcome anytime. You, you, you and Matt. I mean, y'all could call me at eleven o'clock at night and say, "Hey, let's do a stream tomorrow." I, I'd, I'd do it as long as yeah, I'm not working. You just, you, and I heard you had Maddie on. I'm like, I ain't gonna miss this for nothing. I even called you guys up. I just went to Dollar General and got some mini Coca Colas for this thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I need ice <laughs> cream. <laughs> I got some Sammies. I got some ice cream Sammies, Maddie. Don't tell me that I'll drive to Chicago right now. You better. You better. I also have a uh, a 1942 <laughs> Chicago switchblade. Yeah. <laughs> right here. I don't need none of that. <laughs> I also have a bag of uh, Max Scent tubes. Woo. Hey, we could talk about. Let's talk about that Max Scent tube. Uh, uh, Matt I, was telling I, me. Jigs oh, too. Slobber knockers. I got slobber knockers. I got the spinner bugs. I got uh, and uh, tubes. I'm on the whole tube revolution right now. It's called so, the, it's called the jube. The jube. Yeah, it's the jube. It's uh it's a combination of a uh, Berkeley uh, finesse jig and a, the uh, Maxent uh, finesse jig. All right, and then you add the the Maxent two right here, like so. I think he's joking, Kev. Is this something you learned on TikTok? No, no, no. I this was an accident. I'll be honest. Um. But I was my mom told me I was an accident one time. <laughs> hey, you were a fun accident, Kev. <laughs> the um here's here you go. Now that keeper on that that new power bait jig keeps it really well. You see have you seen that keeper on there? It's like the one on the slob knocker. Yeah. 
that's the keeper. Can you see what I'm doing? I can kind of see what you're doing. Okay. I don't have my glasses, so this is very small. But, so... Oh. Is that me or you? That's me. I'm trying oh. to figure out how we can highlight you, Pat. So I took this 3 8 power bait jig. I put the three and a half inch Max N tube on it. Now, obviously, I'm with Berkeley, Matthews with Berkeley, but any jig or tube combination will work as long as it has this angled flat eye. It can't be a straight flat eye, okay? And when you fish this this jube, it's now a jube. I've created a jube, and you twitch it. You could either do it upward like Alabama Shake style or yeah. do it down like a Zara Spook type thing, and it jubes. It walks the dog under the water. There's going to be a lot of people that are mad for that I'm telling this, but um, you ain't seen nothing like it. I'm surprised you are telling it, actually. I know, but I, I'm not a pro, Matt, so I don't care. I'm just trying to sell jigs and tubes, you know? Dude, we, the good thing about the Bateman stream, doesn't matter who you're sponsored by or not sponsored by, you can plug anyone or anything as long as it catches fish hey let me go let me go find glasses because then i just i'm squinting i can't see anything i should have hooked this to the tv yeah but, we'll wait we'll wait for you we'll be here oh you know what i should try and do that uh connect tv smart thing right? hey you got some of those berkeley power blades in that uh satchel yeah oh, I, everybody. yeah yeah i do hold on i'm gonna get glasses i'm gonna look really smart hold on i'll be right back okay Dude's a wild man. I love Pat. Wow. Oh. But I know that honestly that jig on the tube thing's real deal. Uh you know old Sherbert at Renegade, dude, he used to make some badass tubes, those prowler oh. tubes. Oh sh it's a funk. You guys there? Yeah. Oh. Hey, here I am. Hey. Okay. Do I look really smart now? No. <laughs> you kind of like Garth just aged about 10 years. Yeah, I mean, I, totally at Wayne's World. Let me get a hat, and then I'll be Wayne's World. Hold on. I figured I'd wear my signature series hat for the... Now you do, now you yeah. do look like Garth for sure. <laughs> You like it? Oh, yeah. But anyway, um, I do. I have some of the blades. And I, I'm serious about this um, this tube deal uh, with the, the jig on the back, or the, the jig and the tube deal. Man, it walks the dog under the water. And when they eat it, they throwed it. They throwed it. You know what I mean. You Grab know what I mean, man. You got a double willer in there? Uh, Yeah. Double willer. Hey, Pat, thanks for saving the show, man. I knew there was a good reason to bring you on. Everything my son thinks playing Xbox is more important than baits. We, what uh, What do we want to double? Okay, here's a... Uh, yeah, you shell, want to the double up. pillow in the... Half? Both. The compact or the regular? The com Well, I'll show them both, but I've been throwing the compact. I'm going to pull you up on the big screen, Pat. <clears throat> okay, hold on. I'm I got everything in one of those uh, Plano bags. Yeah, I don't get it. It's, it's in here somewhere. I was going to St. Clair and just threw tons of stuff in one thing. Someone just texted me said, this is the greatest thing on the internet right now. Oh, good. I'm glad because I, I was in a long line at Dollar General freaking working my ass off to get to the Baxter Bateman show with my brother Matthew Robertson. Dude, I, I appreciate it. Uh... Gosh, damn Every it. time I go to the Dollar General around here, it's a bunch of freaking meth heads trying to buy cigarettes, and they can't figure out which ones they want, and they only got about $2.50 in change. We got them here, too. I do. Yeah, Bo. Don't you worry. They got... Gosh dang it. Where's the du I got the double willow with the thing on the back. It's the one I've been smashing them on. You can go, you can go with a tandem. Well, no, I want to find the one I've been smashing them on. Hold on. Here it is. Here it is. Well, while you're at it, how's the it's double willow anyway? <laughs> this is the one I've been smashing them on, but it's a say it's a tandem. There you go. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. What you got on the back of that there, Pat? 
this is that uh what do they call that the berkeley power swimmer maddie just it's like the yeah. contextual seduction type bait contextual seduction yeah I like you know, it. it's like a kai tech type so yeah. some this is the half ounce and i've been it's a, it's nice um you can burn it it ain't rolling at all and it's good for this time of year obviously as you guys know oh yeah uh how's the somebody asked a question uh charles pauling says how's the wire size on the power blade the ones i've seen they're not too thick they're not too thin they're they're kind of a medium wire you get good yeah, vibration like a th a thousand, if i was guessing and matt's an engineer he really is you know that kev yeah absolutely a lot he's, of uh, doesn't he's a if redneck gonna, engineer if i was gonna guess i would guess it's like a thirty-five thousandth wire Hey, did you see this? Is it on the package? Does it say it? I don't think so. Hey, Matt, look. Can you see I that? Know. He did a good job on the spinner, right? See that? Uh, Hi, my name is Edwin, and I love Matt Robinson. <laughs> he drove my spinner bait. See that? I think I've caught more fish on Edwin's spinner bait than Edwin has. <laughs> Hey, this That's is a funny. good one. Baxter, I'm opening this one. Right Has here. it got purple in it? It's got purple in it. It's oh, you damn right. Gilbert. Look at, Woo, look at that. That's oh, sexy, bud. Hey, it's got a green pumpkin blade. Really? GP, yeah. So you're going to throw, throw that when they're on the gills? You're going to throw that in some dirty water? Dude, I'll throw, I like this gill color around here in the tributaries of Lake Michigan that I fish. This gill color is amazing in the spring of the year. Like when they move into river systems, the, you can't beat it. I will put an Indiana on this, Indiana blade on that particular one like there. This one's really good too. This white one here, this half ouncer with the Indiana. Yeah. So, you know, Mark Menendez always talks about throwing a coleslaw, or not coleslaw, it's a cantaloupe co color. Cantaloupe? Cantaloupe. Yeah. You, get, you get him on your show, you ask him about the cantaloupe. Okay. Well, it's, it's, oh, I love Mark. It yeah. looks just like a cantaloupe. It's not a bone. It's not a white. It's that weirdish kind of huh. fuzzy, kind of a fuzzy peach, exactly. I guess. You love fuzzy peach. <laughs> Yeah. We all like a fuzzy yeah. peach. The uh, you guys get on that slobber knocker yet? I haven't thrown it. Uh, Matt showed it to me. I, I think it looks looks good. It looks legit. Okay, yeah. I, I've been smashing them on the slobber knocker too. Yeah. I think uh, so, Matt. I think you and I catch more fish on Berkeley stuff than any of the whole Berkeley team. In case right. in case yeah. our bosses are listening, they should know that. Yeah. I'm gonna... <laughs> Berkeley bites Saturday. <laughs> you're gonna win on them right yeah and i'm i might i might gopro it stick the gopro in the in the light socket back there and video it so Dude, back, you want me to blow your mind and Matt, what Matt, i'm gonna show you what matt's gonna win it on oh wait i can't show you in case the competition's watching what, what uh, turn what tournament are we talking about here the one matt's fishing this weekend uh the jet Oh, the Jetta tournament. Yeah, I didn't fish them to qualify. And I'll be honest, I wouldn't have qualified. The Return no, of the I Jedi suck. tournament? The Return <laughs> of the Jedi. I love that. Like, Robertson? I put in some serious hours on the lake this, this week like I haven't in years. Oh, it was raining, raining and windy and sleeting. And, and I'm like, I, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm fishing. I'm like, What? <laughs> what? I mean, I knew there was something going on. Yeah. Something. I feel my fingers. Well, here's what Matt's going to win it on. This is the slobber knocker right here. Okay, you see that? And then next end two. You take that, boom, put it on the slobber knocker, same keeper. That right there, son, is a smallmouth killer. No, I haven't had that. But you know, you may be on to something, Pat, because, you know, I do a lot of stuff. People talk about chatterbaits and bladed jigs. And I'll always get that one guy that says the craziest creature bait I've ever heard of is the best thing ever on the back of a chatterbait. So why wouldn't a tube work? Well, here's what I prefer. Again, I'm not a professional angler, so take what I say with a grain of salt. But I do fish just about every day. 
and I do like to catch fish, so I figure out ways to catch them. Um, and this straight profile on a bladed jig type uh, lure, this the slobber knocker, is my favorite. I used to like the lake fork thing, and then Berkeley has the stinger one. Uh, I was hoping you had one of those. I, I, I haven't got, got to see one in person. Yeah, I, I got stinger. I, I don't know. I like the little hex deal I got going on in the plastic. I do too. I think that's really unique. I'm all about unique stuff. I know people have, and I have done this, been critical of Berkeley for maybe, I won't say copying, but some kind of unoriginality. But some of the stuff lately they've been doing, is they're doing a really good job. Hey, I don't care if they copy it. I really don't care. As long as it's good. You know why? Because I'm on the Berkeley team. Yeah, right? I, I agree with it. Hey, look, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Or a raccoon, or whatever you want to. Yeah. Long, I mean, it'd be a pretty boring industry if we only had one company and only a few styles of baits, right? So that deal right there, with the tube on the back. As as Matt knows, this the slobber knocker will not punt or juke as much as a traditional bladed jig, but it goes through things like you would not believe grass, and especially wood. Like this slobber knocker, for those that don't know, excels in wood. And with this tube behind it, man, you can crawl it through some, some lay downs and brush piles. It's amazing what it goes through. I feel man. like a slobber knocker and some big wood is a really good combination. Dude, always, <laughs> always, you know, and again, at the end, they throwed it. Slobber knocker, wood, throwed it. All right. Someone asked, here's a good question. Uh, Matt, uh, how do you tune a spinnerbait? Like, <clears throat> I personally, I just bend the wire. I mean. Yeah, I just bend the wire back, but. Um, it's kind of like a crankbait. If it's running right, bend the wire left. It's I'm tuning right. it now. See how yeah, I'm tuning it? you got to bend the wire down towards the hook and get it to, at that right angle where it's kind of the blades running parallel to the hook. There you go. Uh, Chris wants to know what's the durability on the wire? Does it need to be bent back in place after a big one? Um, no. I so I've caught a crap load on uh, on that one spinner bait, and um, ever once I've had a couple like smash it where you got to bend it back, but I've, I haven't had one break yet. And I'm telling you, I've caught. I mean, I've probably I've probably got. 10 to 14 days of fishing in on this on that one spinner bait and i mean if you see the fish man calf caught uh you will see it's, them it's actually the ones matt caught but yeah yeah uh, yeah so, so before somebody asks this question because i see this all the time pat on instagram and whatnot someone put a bait up there calling me and, up and they go hey uh I caught a few fish and the paint fell off, and I'm paying twenty nineteen dollars or twelve dollars for a bait, dude. That bait, as many better. fish as Matt caught, it did hold up. So if you spend twelve dollars and you're one of those guys where the paint job matters, personally, a lead head would work fine for me. Uh, <laughs> it holds up. Like the finish is good on it, good components. You know, I'll say that very unbiased. You know, we all know I'm sponsored by Six Cents. They make a spinner bait. It's yep. a good spinner bait. But we're going to tell the juice on here, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. Today, he was making fun of me. Uh-oh. Yeah. yeah, I was talking to Benny Milliken today. He was making fun of me because for the questions I was asking John Cox last night. I, I got to watch part of that, but I had to help my son do homework last night. I'm sorry, Pat. Well, no, it, it's fine. Matt, I asked John Cox if he thought that a sexually satisfied man catches more bass. All right, no doubt. 100%. Yeah, yeah, Milliken was making fun of me for that. Your boss at six cents. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not, not going. I'll I'm just, gonna... I'll just tell y'all. Hopefully, my wife's not watching. Uh oh. Like when I go fishing, I'm good. You see what I'm saying? So if I'm not catching them, it ain't because of that. <laughs> <laughs> Think what you will. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Here's a uh, question. Uh, Let me check the pizza. Here's a good Berkeley question. Does Berkeley make a good buzz bait? And Matt, do you get to help them design any baits? I don't uh, know that they got a buzz bait. 
I don't think they do have a buzz bait. And I haven't really helped them design any baits, but they got some baits that kind of that they're working on that kind of fall into my expertise. And yeah, I've been giving them a little test or two. So, and it's honestly like whenever you think there's something that you've never seen, like just know that there is. Yeah. So I've had ideas I've wrote down on paper and drew out. And then a year later, I'm like, well, shit, somebody else has it. So I had a really good idea for a swim bait head a few years ago, drew it out, and was going to make a mold, and literally got on tackle warehouse, and I'm like, they got this some bitch on clearance. That's probably a bad idea. Right. Uh, all right, here's, here's Patrick Thomas, Matt. How much do you throw glides on Kentucky Barkley Lake, and when is the best time to throw those glad baits? Um, I used to throw them on Kentucky Lake a bunch. I tried throwing one for about an hour this week, and I realized that since there's no bass on the lake, that it's kind of senseless to be throwing a big bait, try to catch big fish. And uh, But that being said, in the wintertime, springtime, uh, winter and spring be the best time to throw them and a little cooler water you know upper 40s lower 50s do you Maybe. feel like the fish commit a little bit better like in the fall time versus the springtime or is it vice versa that that's a question i've never asked on the glide baits yeah um i think they commit to it about the same i just think it's uh you have to fish them fish the bait different in the spring versus fall Right. So, what what do you do different in the spring versus fall fishing that glide bait? Like in the spring, whenever I'm fishing it, I'll throw it out there, let it sink a little, and I'll reel it slow. And about every fourth to sixth turn of the reel handle, I give it a real tiny, just a little. I mean, I barely twitch the tip of the rod just to give it a little flare. And then, and then once the water warms up, like whenever they push up shallow. Uh, on into the fall uh, I fish it more erratic kind of like you see Carl and Brandon fishing it's mm -hmm. like you know you know real yeah. quick like erratic shit works I saw it yeah uh, now let me ask you this Pat if you're fishing a bait let's say you're fishing a spinner bait a, a jig or whatnot, you take it off alright you cut it off and then an hour later, Matt's kicking your ass on the same bait, and you put it back on. Do you tie? Do you clip off the knot, or is it still good to go if you just if it's got two or three knots already on? Do you, do you think that hurts anything? <coughs> Wait, hold on. I was trying to figure out screen mirroring, but <laughs> I think you're asking me if I cut if I leave straggler knots. Yeah. Do you leave any stranglers on there or not? No, no, no. I cut them all clean, bud. <laughs> Dude, now Matt. That, that I do. <laughs> Matt got on my ass when we were fishing. Hold on a second. I think I got... It's connected to the other TV in the bedroom. What uh -oh. is going on? It's in the love lounge. Yeah. I have a cab. That was a little upset, <laughs> bud. I could not believe... Like, I pulled a uh, spinnerbait out. Matt's like, dude. No, it was a swim bait head. It had like three knots on it already. He's like, are you really going to do that? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, dude, you cannot do that. I'm like, out of all the things out here, you trying to tell me I can't have three knots on this thing? Yeah. But you did catch a big I caught a nice blue cat. You good now, Pat? Yeah, this is way better. I'm actually on a uh, a TV. How are we looking so, on the TV? I'm yeah, the it's work. I, I mean, I couldn't see, man. I got bad eyes. So I feel weird. I'm the only bald guy on this go. thing. My, my well, I'm, I'm 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 losing a lot too. It's, but you know, I was gonna go for the skull. It keeps going back. I got a little bit of a thick hairline, but not too bad. Yeah, you're, you'll lose yours eventually too, Matt. No, nah, I'll get hair implants before I lose my hair. I yeah, like Steven Tyler from Aerosmith? 
You're going to get me here in plans for Christmas, aren't you? Yeah, I'll give you some. <laughs> not at home. <laughs> not the home kit. What what, you, what other questions did you ask John Cox that I missed on last night? Oh, gosh, the whole damn show. Go to straightcast.net. It's on every platform. Every uh, It's on the uh, Roku. It's on that YouTube, Facebook. Damn, you just straight up businessman me. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, no, no, I'm serious. I don't know. Like, I, there's so much, and I'm gonna be honest with you, Kevin. I don't, uh, I don't always remember what I ask. It's like, it just. I mean, I have things in my head, but I don't necessarily even remember the shows. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know. Do you know what? Maybe you don't know what I mean. Yeah, he drinks. Two, he drinks a couple red. I've been there during his ritual. And oh, you have a ritual. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like. It's like when the Stones get ready to play. Let me tell you something. He drank so many Red Bulls, I promise you he can't remember. <laughs> no, no. Hold on now. Hold on a second. I got to tell you, I'm off of the Red Bull. I haven't had Red Bulls in like, gosh. I got I to pee. I'm Carry this, Pat. I'm on the coffee hard now, man. So I, I can't drink the Red Bulls. If I drink a Red Bull, I'm up till like 3 in the morning, and I just don't want yep. that. That was part of the ritual. Like, I remember whenever I was over there, I, my heart was pounding out of my chest just watching you drink all the damn Red Bull. <laughs> Dude, I I just can't. Yeah, I can't do it anymore. It used to be like 6 o'clock. I'd have to drink it at 6 o'clock, and then I know I could fall asleep by 2. But it just got, I don't know. I just, coffee's Dude, better now. You were drinking Red Bulls, and I was eating ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> That's true, but no, I'm completely off the energy drinks. I just don't enjoy them now. Yeah? Yeah. They make me too sketchy. You know what I mean? Where are yep. you at? You at the compound? Yeah, I'm at the compound. It's uh okay. been here. I ain't been here long, dude. Like it uh it's nice to be of that. Nice. There's Man, Jeff. I like this co hosting thing, Pat. You ever want to sit in? I got a spot. You call for me you. anytime. Uh well, now that I figured out how to put this on the regular TV, yeah, uh, way better. I'm going to grill you a little bit because I don't yeah, get this ahead. opportunity to have superstars, two superstars. Let me yeah, ask one, you. you Matt, Maddie is. Yeah, I'm always. a talk show host. We're nobody, Kev. Dude, I still every time I go fishing with Matt uh, or we talk, I always think when I was working in tackle shop and I'm 19 years old working. You know, 50, 40 hours a week slinging baits at the old cabin that Ronnie owned, which was the best store ever. Yeah. Uh, Matt coming in every Saturday morning as soon as the door, and you got any more Yamalu and getting, <laughs> getting two, 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 gallons of, two gallons of Yamalu and his old skeeter. And I want to see him till the next morning and come in and get him some more oil. And the dude's a fishing machine. And, uh, God did them things drink the oil. Yeah. He yeah. had a whole bed full of them. Whole pickup bed full. From from Catawba to Morris and back and burn forty five gallons. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it I, I it's kinda crazy, you know, when someone he's always treated you really well. Like me and Matt could dude he'd come in tackle store at five o'clock, we close at five thirty, we'd be out in a parking lot talking baits and fishing and whatnot till seven o'clock my wife would be like where are you at and i'm like yeah, i'm talking to matt you know yeah and it's crazy <laughs> but my point is if you work hard and you put effort into it uh and you do things your way and i don't mean that negative i mean matt does his thing like i don't think matt's a doc talk believer he's always done his thing on kentucky like you will find some success and i don't just mean that in fishing I mean that whatever you want to do. So, um, okay, I'm off a tangent. So my question well, to you, Pat. Hey, that's what a talk show is for. My question yeah. to you, Pat, is how, when did you start Stray Cass? Like, I'm going I'm gonna grind, grow you a little bit. When did you start Stray Cass and why did you say, man, I want to have the greatest live stream in the galaxy with all these awesome pro anglers? When did that really start? I, well, this, this is the seventh season of straight cast and um i've been doing i've been in broadcasting for wow about 11 years now i guess 
I'm pretty sure so, I seen you on YouTube on an old school elite series video from maybe Kentucky I, Lake. Yeah, who knows? No, it was I, it wasn't elites? It was some other bassing organization. I don't know. I gosh, I wish I was on the elite thing, but it uh no, it was some. Uh, it was over at that place where they have the good biscuits and gravy in the morning at the docks. What's the name of that? Good is biscuits. It Paris? And gravy. Oh, is it Paris Landing? Yeah, yeah. At Paris. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I did a radio show uh, right outside Chicago here uh, for about five years. And um, that's kind of where I got my start. And then, to be honest, uh, I was kind of handful and they fired me. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> shit and, happens uh, yeah and then i took a year off and got myself together uh and uh started on the internet bud and uh it's like hey let's just do this uh and then you can do whatever you want to do and don't have to answer to anyone and kind of how i feel kind of like it. like matt yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> got to answer to people though because I, I you know i gotta pay those fines so yeah, yeah. That, it's come to that way for everyone yeah you especially matt jeez you're yeah, wearing geez. pants tonight matt i assume yeah, yeah we got pants on and we're not taking them off right now well you don't need it don't matter on the talk show matt when you come on uh on the straight cast next time you're doing it in your undies yeah in the speedo <laughs> in the speedo it's fine My speedo with blue flames on it <laughs> La Flama Blue. Yeah, no, that's why you're laughing. <laughs> hey, let's, let's hit a few fishing questions here. Uh, Chris wants to know, Matt, can you use any baits outside your sponsors on a late event? Uh, yeah, we can use uh, use baits other than you know our sponsors. Um, the biggest thing is probably not you. You know, you just can't spotlight them. You know what I mean? Yeah, but. I think you know, Honestly, for the most part, you know, I use probably 80, 80 percent Berkeley stuff, eighty five percent. Yeah, like they make really good products. That's a, that's the difference, you know. Yeah, I'll say this to that question: uh, if you're really comfortable with a company and you get a company like Berkeley, they've got spinner baits, bladed jigs, they got soft plastics, uh, they got crank baits, they got top water, they got and there's really nothing bad they make. It's pretty easy to use your sponsor stuff like, you know, Six yeah. Cents. They pretty much make about everything. You know, there's some stuff they don't. Um, I like to experiment, too. Sometimes part of being a pro angler, or I'm not a pro. I'm just a bait guy. It's just playing around with different company stuff. You know what I mean? Um, all right. Pat's gone. He may have dropped his phone. That was wild. We'll see if he gets back in huh. here. Uh, let's see. I had another question. Uh, Caleb, do you wants to know, Matt? Do you change your trailers first to affect the action or depth, or change weights or blade configuration and move on? Um, I don't throw trailers unless the water's cold, and I don't really. And, uh, the only thing I use to adapt is the one, you know, blade configuration. It's pretty much the same all year except for in cold water of the big Colorado. So it's all it's all head white. All right, here's a question. I I haven't even asked you this. Matt, did you ever get anything back when you got all your stuff stolen? That was what, a year and a half, two years ago? Uh yeah. So you got it all back? Oh, so I got um I got some junk plastic back, a boat seat without a pedestal on it, <laughs> and with even at the part that goes in the pedestal, I just got the actual seat back and uh, my spare trolling motor, and that is it. Dude, that's wild. Yeah. All right, uh, here's a go. Gator Adventures, Matt and Pat, answer this. What are your thoughts on the Berkeley Fusion hooks? Good hooks, bad to the bone. Yeah, I, I like them. Uh, you know what's really good one too is that feather one. And yeah. uh, I've been, I'm, I mean, I know it's no new trick or anything, but I throw that jaywalker a lot and it doesn't come with the, the feather on it. That's the Zara Spook type walking uh, Berkeley bait. Mm -hmm. And I put that uh, Fusion 19 feather one on it. It's I love it. The 
Yeah. The, uh, uh, hey, you know, here's I a like good one, Baxter. Books, you'll you'll like this. Like, Speaking of uh, f- uh, Cox was talking yesterday that the sneak is to, what's the one that's like the shower blow, Maddie? The cane walker. The cane walker in the salt water one. He says that's the sneak. One twenty-five. Really? Huh. Yeah. Brad. Gave that away. Um, what's that, Matt? I said Brad, send me some. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Brad's in a big derb. I know. I, I, called, I think it's. The, I was practicing. It, told him send me some more spinner baits. <laughs> was he mad at you? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, the spinner baits a legit deal. Um, any uh, anything else? My internet keeps going in and out. We've been on here for an hour and a half. Um, yeah, I can't last as long as Pat. I I need to know your secrets to. I I run long. a lot. It gives me extra endurance, and I hear that from the ladies a lot too. That I ran thirty like, miles afternoon and i'm about to fall asleep dude straight up i gotta give props to matt on the weight loss like he's a good looking son of a bitch now not that he wasn't before but now he's really upped his game hey matt you yeah. you know who you look like now more that you've lost weight you look like a skinny chris from family guy <sighs> maybe i you like do it. a skinny chris Skinny Chris. I was okay. kind of thinking like a Hulk Hogan because he's got the dark beard going on with the blonde hair. Uh, if we get him on some pre-workout formula and, and, <laughs> hit, and hit the bench, we Jesus can Hulk Christ. it up. <laughs> you look like a Targaryen, Matt. Like you, yeah. you have dragon oh, blood. As I trim the beard, so you know, I trim the beard so it doesn't have a chance to bleach out. Yeah. I, uh, That's the secret. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of felt like a pedophile when I had just the mustache thing going. I don't think I'll ever do that again. You kind of look. Spider like pulls it off. <laughs> That's what Matt told me. He's like, "Don't get mad when I tell you this, but you kind of look like a pedophile with your mustache." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I... Oh, let's see mustache here. Ba- I couldn't pull off a mustache. Dude, that's all my dad rocked from when I was six years old till right. He's still rocking a mustache. Like my dad just, had one why? too, man. All right, any more questions up before we end the stream? Get them in now. You can ask Matt, me. Matt, you need a Sammy. Pat. Ice cream Sammy. You get them Dollar General ice cream sandwiches. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. They got a good crunchy shell. Dude, so if you can ever find Blue Bell. Ice cream sandwiches, they oh. are, God, they're good. I'm familiar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I Absolutely. Bet I couldn't, I couldn't, they bet me I couldn't eat 28 ice cream sand, sandwiches one night, and we didn't have enough ice cream sandwiches, but I pounded those things. <laughs> that was the old Matt. That was the old Matt. Yeah. Like, I'll be honest with you. I thought I could eat. 28 ice cream sandwiches no problem right now actually oh i i could i know you could back when i was a fat ass i guarantee you i could because i'd done oh, it god hey bud i i ran five miles today just so i could drink coca-cola and eat ice cream today i i promise you i'm 51 years old i'm gonna you know i'm i want to eat like shit i don't know what else to tell you <laughs> so i figure if i run it's okay yeah gonna... it's, it cancels each other out right yes yeah, yings and yangs uh, here's a good question from Will Junk and Will says, "Is there any bait Berkeley doesn't make that y'all wish yeah. they did?" Uh, what about uh, a old Berkeley balsa bait? Yeah, well, yeah, that's kind of hard to mass produce, man. It is. I, I, I mean, no disrespect to any manufacturers. I just haven't found a good mass produced balsa wood bait. I agree with that. I think. Uh, PH Customs and uh, Black Label Cliff Pace has done the best job as far as getting a really mass produced one out there. But you know, you got the Iris Seas of the world. I know you love Iris Sea. Oh, I love the Iris. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I like... wouldn't call I wouldn't call Phil or Cliff's baits mass produced though. No, I would just say maybe they're the easiest to get a hold of. Like you can find them on Tackle Warehouse, Omnia, yeah. places like that. But 
you know, the Irises. I like Jimmy Eater, uh, Norm Coulter stuff. Stuff's hard to get. Like, you got to, hey, like, be on the hear, internet at the right time. You ever hear of the potato chips, Kev? No, tell me about the potato chip. It's a uh, a guy named Pete Tadgen. He was, uh, what was that classic? Man, Brent Chapman was up there. Way up there in the classic, and he was, I can't remember what year it was or what lake. It might have been Hartwell. Yeah, I want to think it might have been Hartwell. It was way up the river somewhere or way up in the creek. He's cranking uh, flat side, and that was that. Uh, that was that uh, Pete Tadgen uh, potato chip. It's a hell of a bait. Yeah, I thought you of, would, of anybody you'd know of it. It's very similar to like a little Petey, I think. You know, real skinny, doesn't cast. It sure right. is. Yeah, that sure is. You're right. Also never caught another bass the rest of the tournament. No, that was Davey Height. Oh, okay. Davey Height in the in the 2000 Bassmaster Classic ran like all the way up from Chicago to the Kankakee River, caught the biggest bass of the tournament as a four pounder, and that was the only one he weighed in. Yeah, that's ballsy though. That's a hell of a move. I had all a good right. time with Davey Height at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's a he's always he's like watching you. Did he did he dance? Nobody always tries to get me to sing songs. Doesn't he, Natty? If if you, you could sing a song for an angler's entrance, Pat, what song would it be? Uh, I would sing um, uh, Matt Robertson. Uh, I'd sing for Matt. And uh, I'd have to sing um, probably um, uh, either that uh, Right Said Fred, Too Sexy, I for think myself. you would kill that. Yeah, yeah. I would uh, go out there with that. Or um, uh, I think another good one would be Hungry Like the Wolf Ooh. for Matt. Duran Duran. Come out to Hungry Like the Wolf. And I got, um, I got nothing that he can't sing. Yeah, I'm a songbird. I, I can sing anything. Do you like rap music, Pat? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. I, like, I, I, there's, I really, I like, I don't listen to all kinds of rap, but I know lots of rap. And... I don't. I just know lots of music. I don't know things stick in my head like that. You know. I'm kind of like that. I can listen to country. I can listen to rap. I can listen to classic rock, new rock. Just every day I'm moody, so it just depends on the mood. One day I'm exactly whatever. One day I'm See, three six mafia. You? Next day I'm Led Zeppelin. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with that. Pop, rap, pretty strong. Pretty strong. The rap. Rap, hip hop, and rap, and I mean, I, I listen to about everything, but I don't veer towards the country very much. Yeah, yeah I yeah. uh, the country I like is outlaw country, like you know the bad boys. So some Waylon Jennings. Know, yeah, the old school stuff, and then the new stuff like Hank Three, and of course our friend Billy Strings stuff. Billy like Strings, where it's at, man. Mm-hmm. I'd love to get Billy Strings on a stream, but I don't know shit about playing a guitar, so I'd feel really weird about it. Oh he yeah, wants- we, I had a good time with Billy on the yeah. Straight Cast show. We had fun. We even sang a song. Really? Yeah. What's your What's your? Go ahead and plug it, Pat. Who's Who's coming up next on Straight Cast? Next. Oh, I have uh, um uh a uh, a uh, advertising partner appreciation show. Whoa! Uh, next. week. Yes, so we're going to have, um, so it's uh, the folks from Half a Spot, which, by the way, um, I don't know if you know about this, Kev. I know Matthew does, that um, Half a Spot is one of those uh, online tournament apps. Right. Okay? Yeah. And what they're doing right now, they have a thing called Fish with Stray Cass. And if you fish these online tournaments, download the Half a Spot app, they have Boat, Uh, kayak bank they have north and south divisions and you win some derbs and then you win a grand uh, a a big uh, grand prize derb and then the winner of that gets to go fishing anywhere they choose with straight cast anywhere we're going to ohiv it could be there (laughs) hey i want to go to the amazon or something bud you know what i mean i want a blowgun with poison darts (laughs) 
uh, and avoid we, quicksand. That's what I want to do. I've never been. Uh, actually, I know about that half a spot because I'm pretty sure uh, the last time they did it, you could win a trip to fish with or win, or you could fish against like Ben Milliken, Ike and Alley, yourself, and maybe Matt, some other people. Yeah, pretty yeah, cool, yeah. Cool we, deal. It was, uh, it was exactly. Yeah, we had a thing going like that, and then we all met up in Gunnersville. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you wouldn't be fishing against me. You could probably, you know, come pick a bait off the bait room or something like that. Um, I'm coming down there soon, Kev. Hey, dude, come on. Yeah. You, uh, anything I got, I'll tell you just like Maddie. If I got it and you want it, you can have it. Matt's picked many a baits up here. Uh -huh. You got any Balsa B3s and YP? No. I don't really have that many Bagley's. Uh, well, uh, Wendell would have taken them all. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I've got uh, I'm not naming me tall enough. I got too much shit between me and my, my bagwoods but I got the old old school Kentucky Lake killer right here Matt's gonna know what I'm talking about if I can get it unhooked here the old the old DB old DB3 bagley I like that. Hey, I want. I got. I got to show you something, Kev. Hold on. Let me go back to the other room. Uh oh. Oh, well, I'm coming right back. I know Matt Actually, likes those DB three. I'm gonna end the show like this. Hold on. Yeah, I'll I let you idea. end the show, Matt or yeah. Pat. Yeah, I, I'm. I mean, my part of it, not your show. I'm gonna. <laughs> don't let me take liberties. I gotta yeah. get to bed soon. You know, I'm going to film tomorrow, and Wait, you know what you said let's about. Let's stop streaming on that. Killing this. All right, so we should be connected moment. All right, I think. How did that work? Am I here? Yeah. I, I'm here. I got a little distracted. My wife's texting me. Uh, are you in trouble? No. Oh, yeah. Always. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, now look at this. I'm going to... I'm going to flip it. Can you see this bass right here? Yeah. All right, let me I do. This. All right. But anyway, there's the same DB3 you had. See it? Ooh, yeah. Okay. There's And there's also one in Crawdad. But uh -huh. I'm going to tell you about this DB3. And that color is called LB4, as you know, Kevin, little bass on white. And um, one Mr. Bill Dance gave me. This right here, my hero, Balsa B3 in LB4 when I was about 10 years old. And, and a couple weeks ago, I had breakfast with Mr. Dance, and it was pretty damn cool. We talked about it was his birthday. I had breakfast with him on his birthday, and we talked about his favorite cake. And his mama makes him, uh, ger his mama used to make him a German chocolate with cream in the middle. And oh uh, no, yep, no. and that's what we talked about for about 10 minutes. And boy, the way he described that cake. I wanted that cake. You know what I mean? I ain't no doubt. <laughs> hey, this is the fishing room. I don't know if you guys can see right there. We can. There's all the xenons. They're legit. Legit xenon wall. New 610 custom alpha. Oh, look at this right here. Can you see that reel? You know that one, Matt? Yeah, I do. I've caught a few bass on that one. I've done that. Matt's, Matt slipped them out of milfoil on a 5.6 pistol grip in milfoil. Big boat reel. Flipping them. Boat Perfect. flipping them out of there. Fighter, me and Fighter got the braid. Matt's 5.6 pistol grip. Round wow. abu reel. Boat flipping them. Yeah. 17 pound mono. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. I totally, I totally missed that, Pat, but I want you to know, like, <laughs> You know I'm a huge Tennessee Volunteer fan. Yeah. And part of the reason I am a Tennessee fan, other than my parents, is that freaking power T on Bill Dance's hat, watching yeah. every weekend when I was growing up. He is my favorite, the ultimate pro basser. And when I say pro, I don't mean just his tournament stuff. I mean, dude, think of what he has done for the sport, man. Oh, yeah. Like, but we sucked at football, but people still will remember Bill Dance because that power T on his hat. And uh, he was and really excited about beating Alabama. I actually tweeted at him and said, 
I hope you rested up after that big win. He tweeted me back, "Go Vols!" And that I say, I screenshot it. I was so heck excited. yes, heck yeah, Baxter. So, but yeah. man, my wife is in the chat now, and uh, she's mean, texting me. I think it's time. Ready? Dinner is ready. I What's think for it's, dinner? Dude, my wife can cook really, really well. Oh, I'm sure she can. If you, what, if you come down, if next time you come down here, as long as I'm not working, give me a day, uh, and I'll have her cook us up. She makes an amazing Mississippi pot roast. Oh, my gosh. So oh, she, that happened. Yeah, cool. so slow cook for like eight hours. I'll put some pepperoncinis in there. Oh, cool. I like it's, how you said that, pepperoncini. Is that, the, is that the way? I don't know, but it really sounds good, Kevin. That sounds like a great color. For, yeah. That it, sounds like a great slobber knocker color. It sounds like you should do a cooking show now. No, dude, I can't cook for shit. Kevin the cooking man. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I have begging strips. Dude, those are the best for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. If you get in a pinch, they will work. Like, if you're... I used to film deer hunts all the time, and like you're in a tree stand for eight hours, like you could get by with a begging strip if you had to. Hey, there's protein in there and plenty of preservatives. Like, think about this: dogs eat what we eat. Why well, couldn't I eat a begging strip? Yeah. So your wife's gonna give you a bowl of dog food now if you keep on. Bud. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if that's acceptable, all she's gonna do is open cans of Alpo from now on, Kev. So. She's never made a bad meal. Now sometimes I'll look at what she's making and be like, "You sure about that?" Hey, before we get out of here, I want to remind everybody: you can buy my signature hats at onumfishing.com. Go that's to right. Onum Fishing; it's my signature hat, uh, and uh, all proceeds go to me. So uh, buy them. What uh, what all colors you got now, Matt? You got uh, oh, I got blue. I got oh wait, these are my hats. I got blue. I got uh, black ones with uh, some yellowish chartreuse orange shit on them. I got camo. I got boss shells one. I got uh, traditional black and white. I got the tin cup whiskey blue. Uh, you I got pink ones for the ladies. I even have some on them uh, underwear. Uh, coming out soon and um for the single guys i have the uh on them signature no glove no love uh condom so you should do the underwear where it's on them on the outside so well, when you're wearing them your underwear on uh, and in the inside it says out of them well it says in them on the in outside them. yeah in them yeah yeah, yeah. all right guys all right, we're going- you're gonna get in all big right. trouble now with that Matt- hanging up Mrs. Baxter, it wasn't my fault. Kevin and Matthew kept me on. Peace, Kevin. Hey, Pat, thanks so much, man. Come on anytime. All right, Matt, we're going to wrap it up, man. Crazy show tonight. Uh, I'm going to get your video done this weekend in the next few days. Let me get my hard drive and stuff going. Um, But thanks for answering all those questions earlier. You gave out some great juice. Um, Anytime you want to come on here. Absolutely. Come on, or you can come in the bait room, whatever. Um, So... Thanks again, all the YouTube members, subscribers that, that have been in the show. Uh, make Do me a favor, you're still listening after the stream ends and processes. Y'all go leave a comment. What was your favorite part of the show? Go to Tackle Warehouse, buy some Berkeley Spinner Baits. If you shop at SixCentsFishing.com, use my discount code, Baitman. They let me kind of do what I want to on here, and I really, truly appreciate Casey and the whole team over there. Uh, Matt, anything else you want to say? No, man, that's good. I enjoyed it. All right, we're officially off them. Y'all have a good evening.